kind of worried <laughs> since I live right by the river. Now at 11, the water is rising. We're tracking flooding concerns near Portland, but farther south, it's much worse. Where rescues and evacuations are underway. And the massive landslide that shut down a major highway across the Cascades. All this as more rain moves in. Plus, another deadly crash on a dangerous Portland road, and it comes hours after crews broke ground on a big project to make Powell safer. Your news starts now. This is KGW News. At Water 11. had rise from the uh, flooded river and cut them, basically put them on an island. First at 11, fast rising floodwaters are wreaking havoc and forcing rescues, and it's only expected to get worse from here because we have plenty more rain on the way. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm Maggie Vespa. To be clear, the worst of the flooding is south of Portland near Corvallis and Eugene. And in fact, right now, the Lane County Sheriff's Office is telling people south of Eugene to leave immediately. This evacuation spans from the Cottage Grove area to just outside the Eugene city limits, and they say the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is releasing water from the Dorina Reservoir to keep it from overflowing, and they warn flow rates will be higher than those of the 1996 flood. We'll, of course, keep tabs on this and bring you updates as they come. But in the meantime, let's turn now to KGW Storm Team coverage. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is tracking the latest on this record rainfall. But we're going to start with Lindsay Nadrich, who has been tallying up the impacts in our area so far. Lindsay? Well, the rain has been coming down pretty much all day. And because of that, we've seen river levels rising and even water rescues in Lebanon. It's freaking me out a little bit. Linda Barnett is one of many concerned about possible flooding. We caught up with her at Carver Park, where the boat ramp area was already flooded. This is the highest I've ever seen it, ever, and I've seen a few floods here. And from what she saw, she says it didn't take long to get like this. It's going up really fast. Just in four hours, it's gone up probably two or three feet. So I'm kind of worried <laughs> since I live right by the river. In Estacada at Milo McIver State Park, the Clackamas River was just a little more than a foot from flood level and moving fast. The National Weather Service estimates there will be minor flooding by Monday afternoon. It's said to expect lowland flooding from Estacada several miles downstream to Carver. In Junction City, people are also preparing for possible flooding. One rancher moved all of his horses just to be safe. Got all the equipment out and uh, have got horses out this morning. 25 horses moved within a couple hours this morning. In Lebanon, people couldn't move fast enough. Firefighters sent us these photos of a water rescue. Over FaceTime, Lebanon Fire District Battalion Chief Nick Tyler said crews had to rescue two people and a dog. Crews think they were homeless and camping near Gill's Landing on the South Santiam River. The water had rise from the uh, flooded river and cut them, basically put them on an island and they were um, just trapped on this little island. Crews had to use ropes and a raft to save one man and a jet ski with a rescue sled to save the other man and his dog. I kind of had that feeling this morning coming to work that we were going to have some issues. Um, I didn't think we would have to be crossing the river in a jet sled to go rescue people off an island, but you never know. But this wasn't the only problem in the area. Waterloo Campground was evacuated because of flooding. Right now we're just faced with a lot of water and no place for it to go. So lots of uh, isolated flooding on different roadways. Well, as it keeps raining, crews are concerned the water will only keep rising. Back to you. Yeah, of course, valid concerns there. Lindsay Nadrich live for us. Lindsay, thank you. So let's now bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. And Joe, you told me this has been the wettest weekend we've had this spring. It has, absolutely. And we have been seeing some record amount of rainfall here in the last 24 to 48 hours. And unfortunately, the rain is going to continue here the rest of your Sunday night and heading into early tomorrow morning as well. So let's get a jump to the, the radar at this hour. We've been seeing a steady stream of green all day long and all night long, and it's going to continue here the next couple of days. I can tell you this, the forecast going forward yeah, has showers at least a little bit here and there throughout most of the work week. We'll zoom in a little bit just the east side of the metro area near the foothills of the mountains. Last couple of hours been seeing some heavier downpours near Sandy, but take a look at some of the rainfall amounts throughout uh, the state. Detroit Lake, this is in the last 24 hours, over three and a half inches of rain north bend along the southern Oregon coast, over three inches. Eugene, over two inches, and this is a record amount of rainfall for Eugene. Portland for the 
entire weekend, 1.33 inches of rain. Yesterday, you saw about eight tenths of an inch. So going forward, rising rivers and streams because of the continuous showers that we're going to be moving through here just the next couple of hours. Clackamas River near Estacada, close to flood stage. Thunderstorms possible. I am going to be expecting to see some more relatively dry conditions heading into tomorrow, but if some of those thunderstorms develop, let's say late in the afternoon, the early part of the evening, there could be more widespread showers associated with those thunderstorms. This is a look at the Clackamas River in your Estacada. Right now is running it just below 19 feet, but you'll notice flood stages at 20 feet. There'll still be some overspilling in some of the banks there, but you'll notice this model is showing the water levels will start to recede really by late tomorrow night and into the middle part of the week. So the, the watches and warnings still in place throughout parts of the central and southern the Willamette Valley. That's a flood watch that's in effect until tomorrow night. There's also a flash flood watch through parts of the Columbia River Gorge. I'll talk more about that in detail and coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, Joe, obviously a lot to watch for you. We appreciate it. Thank you. And speaking of another casualty of the weather right here, a landslide has shut down Highway 58 between Eugene and Oak Ridge. This is a route over the Cascades to get to Eastern Oregon and ODOT says the slide right now is unstable and debris is still falling. So if you're headed that way, prepare for an extended closure. Well, moving on tonight to a developing story. Police say they have recovered a body from the Washougal River. Officers tell us they found this body yesterday upstream from Hathaway Park. The Clark County Major Crimes Team is investigating this and we're working on getting more details, especially on whether or not they think this death is suspicious. Well, hours after crews broke ground on a big project to make an infamously dangerous road safer for pedestrians, a driver hit and killed a man walking along Southeast Powell Boulevard. The crash happened just after midnight under the I-205 overpass. Police say the man was crossing the street. First responders tried but couldn't save him. We don't know the names of anyone involved. We are told, though, the driver stayed on scene and is cooperating with police. No word on charges or citations. Police right now blaming poor visibility. And again, the fact that Powell has long been dubbed one of Portland's high crash corridors. Anytime you have these major crash corridors where you have multi lanes in both directions, it can be a very dangerous situation, especially some of them have higher uh, speed limits and the speed limit is uh, a major concern. So once again, as we reported yesterday, crews just broke ground on the outer Powell project, which aims to improve the safety of that area. The project will cover four miles, adding new sidewalks, safer crosswalks, curb separated bike lanes and more. And a woman is dead after getting hit by a driver on I-5 south of Corvallis. Police say 19-year-old Brielle Doman of Grants Pass was stopped on the shoulder of the freeway just before midnight last night. And they say she walked into the road for unknown reasons and was hit and killed. Police say she died at the scene. We are hearing tonight from the family of a missing Oregon man known for being a former Mouseketeer. This story is making nationwide headlines. 76 year old Dennis Day has been missing since last year and last week police found a body in his home near Medford. They're not yet saying if it's his body. Day's husband reported him missing in July. Family say they've anxiously been awaiting information for months. We're, we're devastated right now. I can't imagine that he would leave Ernie. They've been married a long time. He loves him. He always has loved him um, I, and his little dog. Now, there's a lot we don't know as to about, about why this investigation has taken as long as it has. In January, a point of note here, police say Day's car was found along the coast with two people inside who were not known to him or his partner. And back in the mid 50s, of course, this is how we know him. Day was a cast member on the original Mickey Mouse Club. A man is facing charges after police say he pointed a realistic looking fake gun at passing cars, including an ambulance. This happened this morning along Southeast MLK and witnesses called the police who found Caleb Baker, who you just saw at Northeast First and Cooch. And then police say this was the weapon he had. It was actually a replica BB gun. Baker is charged with disorderly conduct and multiple counts of menacing.
Well, owners of a baby gear store in Southeast Portland are grappling with their second break in in two weeks, and this time owners say the burglars were stealthy, crawling under sensors and grabbing the most expensive items. Here's KGW's Brittany Falkers. The Eco Baby Gear Store had to turn customers away Sunday because for the second time in just two weeks, it's just frustrating. It's like, why are people doing this? They were the victims of a burglary. But it's just the damage and it's the emotional stress of having somebody uh, break into your location. Owner Diana Moore says she got a call from police around 8 o'clock Sunday morning to tell her that her store had been robbed again. It's, it's horrible and we really think citizens of Portland need to be aware. I got here this morning and I'm, I'm just in tears. It's not, it's not easy. Moore says the first time someone broke in through a window, taking whatever they could get their hands on, but this time it was through the front door and she says it feels targeted. They went under the radar of our sensor. They grabbed one of our best-selling car seats, our most expensive one, and a couple other things as they're going out the door. In both break-ins, she says the suspect or suspects used big rocks to bust in. But store manager Jean Lynn says the damage goes deeper than broken glass and stolen inventory. It's very violating. This is my home, my second home, and I take it very personally. They're asking anyone who buys car seats and strollers online to check for glass and call police with any information you have. We're not going to let this um, pull us all the way down, but we have been pulled down right now, and it's sad. Brittany Falkers, KGW News. And as you just heard, Moore and Lynn say they will not let these recent burglaries stop them from doing their jobs. They plan to open their doors again Monday morning, and police tell us this is an ongoing investigation. Well, now to Eugene or the Eugene area where owners of a senior care service say a woman is posing as one of their caregivers and stealing medications from people's homes. Multiple people have reported this has happened to them or to their elderly relatives. The company's called Visiting Angels and they say a woman knocks on doors saying she's a part of their organization and she's having car trouble. Then she asks to use the restroom. When she leaves, people discover their medications are gone. That's the worst thing about what she's doing is that she's taking advantage of the best characteristics of people of my uh, generation. Now, police are investigating, but they say no arrests have been made.